Mayor Buttigieg, you have described yourself as a moderate, but one of your policies at least goes further than some on the stage with you are willing to go. You have called for the decriminalization of all drugs. Does that include heroin, meth, and cocaine, some of the drugs that have contributed to this crisis? No, what I've called for is that incarceration should no longer be the response to drug possession. With all due respect, Mayor Buttigieg, on your website it says yeah. that you call for decriminalization yeah. of all drugs. Again, what I'm calling for is that we end the use of incarceration as a response. This does not mean that it will be lawful to produce or distribute those kinds of harmful drugs. But also, as we know from the opioid crisis, some of this has been driven by companies that were acting irresponsibly with substances that were lawful. It's why in South Bend we sued those companies to hold them accountable. We've got to make sure that there is accountability for those who suppressed evidence about the addictiveness of those substances, even while we're also coming to recognize that these kinds of addiction are a medical issue, not a moral failure on the part of somebody battling that addiction. That's why medication-assisted treatment is so important. And those people who are being revived, and, and our own EMTs in my city have been so frustrated by the experience of reviving somebody, but then they have nowhere to go. Sometimes you get brought back with a dose of Narcan, but then your life depends on whether in the days that follow you make it until somebody can actually see you because we have such a shortage of mental health and addiction providers in this country. We must act to change that and save lives when we do. I want to bring this question now to Mr. Yang. You've said you would decriminalize opioids, but you've also said that you would require all overdose patients to go to mandatory treatment centers for three days. Well, right now in New Hampshire, there aren't enough beds in treatment centers and across the country. How would you make sure treatment is available for all overdose patients? And what would you do to fill the gap in the meantime? That's what we have to change, Monica. I've heard heartbreaking stories from families here in New Hampshire that have been destroyed, torn apart by the opiate epidemic. And you have to look at the companies that profited to the tune of tens of billions of dollars in profits of essentially blood money. As president, we will take back those profits and put them to work right here in New Hampshire so that if you are seeking treatment, you have resources to be able to pursue it. We, this is not a money problem fundamentally, this is a human problem, but money cannot be the obstacle. This is something that happened on the government's watch. The government allowed this opiate epidemic to spread throughout our communities, and we have to do everything in our power to actually make sure that if you're seeking treatment, you know you're not going to be sent to jail. We have safe injection and safe consumption sites for you. If you have a family member who's struggling, you can refer them and know that they're not going to have criminal penalties as a result. There is so much about this that's endemic to what's happened throughout the country in terms of companies running amok, this hyper-corporate capitalism where if money's on one side in this country and people are on the other side, the money is winning. You can see it with the opiate epidemic, you can see it with the military-industrial complex, the fossil fuel companies. This is what we must change, and that's where I'll lead as president. Uh, Senator Klobuchar, yes. I want to take the question to you now. As a prosecutor, you embrace tough on crime policies, even with drug offenders. You've also spoken many times about your father's own addiction issues, his own alcoholism, and his DUI arrests. If addiction is a disease, should people be arrested for it? And as a prosecutor, do you regret sending people with substance abuse issues to jail? Um, I led one of the most successful drug courts in the country in Hennepin County and I always would say and believed and I think my record shows this um, that we weren't a business we didn't want to see repeat customers and if you don't want to see repeat customers the only answer is treatment and maybe you're referring to some of the people who were dealing big time in drugs uh, yes I felt that we should prosecute those people uh, but when it comes to and you asked uh, Mr. Yang a question, and I think it, we owe it to the people of New Hampshire to have had one of the biggest addiction rates in the country and death rates when it comes to opioids to explain how we will pay for the treatment and the beds. I've been very clear about this. There's going to be a major settlement coming through, a federal settlement against all these opioid manufacturers. The 
uh, evidence is, is overwhelming, including an email where one guy, a business guy, says to the other, they're eating them like Doritos. Just keep pumping them out. We will get a conservative estimate $40 billion in from that settlement. We can put a two cents per milligram tax on opiates that brings in another $40 billion. Then you can close a hedge fund loophole that brings in $18 billion. And just like every other policy I've proposed, and I think New Hampshire voters should care about this, I have showed how I'm going to pay for it. Uh, because I think we have someone in the White House that has told over 15,000 lies. He makes all kinds of promises. The people of New Hampshire and the people of our country deserve better. I will get this done, and it is personal for me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.